Yesterday was a big day to be a Star Wars fan as the official The Rise of Skywalker final trailer made its debut by Disney and Lucasfilm on ESPN during Monday Night Football at halftime and a lot of fans were either very underwhelmed about the trailer and or very excited about the trailer and what's coming our way by of course director J.J. Abrams. This is Mike Zero, make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, the new trailer, I will say, has a lot of callbacks here and there to Star Wars Legends, the originals, the prequels, and of course, even callbacks to the original ideas for Return of the Jedi that never made it to the final cut of the movie, as well as other Star Wars films based within the sequel trilogy itself. Now, today we will be going over secrets that you missed in the rise of Skywalker's final trailer that I think a lot of you are really going to enjoy because it brings us back to the previous movies back to original ideas that never made it to the final cuts of the past films and the originals and the sequels, etc. Now, the first one that I want to go over that I think is a very nice callback to The Force Awakens, specifically Han Solo, is a Han Solo Easter egg that stands out right in back of the Millennium Falcon where we have the entire Resistance fleet. You can see Han Solo's Aravana which is basically a Baleen Dash class heavy freighter. We saw this in The Force Awakens in the first act of the film where Han Solo and Chewbacca were on board of it. In case you have no idea what the Aravana really is, it's actually used for smuggling operations piloted by both Han Solo and Chewbacca, where it's actually affiliated with Han Solo's shipping company and was manufactured by Corellian Engineering Corporation. So this Aravana ship, all right, the freighter in the background, is actually now now a part of the resistance fleet and most likely they are going to use this for transport right using this for transport of resistance soldiers fighters and even some of Maz Kanata's crew that's going to be a part of the major battle between the resistance the first order and the new sith empire so that by far I think was one of the more enjoyable easter eggs in the rise of skywalker giving us a call back to han solo now, number two, the next thing that I want to go over here is where we do, in fact, hear Carrie Fisher at the very end of the final trailer, where she actually says, always, all right, where Carrie Fisher says, always, at the very end, it was actually taken from a deleted scene for The Force Awakens, where originally, Carrie Fisher as Leia was actually supposed to tell Rey, Rey, may the Force be with you, always. In the final cut of The Force Awakens, she just says, may the Force be with you. So, that line of dialogue of her saying always was actually taken from The Force Awakens by J.J. Abrams, which is very, you know, clever, the fact that he's taking dialogue from past Star Wars films and kind of throwing it into the mix. Uh, do note that her voice kind of sounds echoey in design, which could very well be a hint that she's going to pass on and become a Force ghost in The Rise of Skywalker, like some of the leaks have suggested. Now, the other piece that I want to go over is, of course, something related to Palpatine that I think a lot of people are really going to be satisfied with, is that Palpatine's throne, seen in the old throne room, is actually the, the, the original throne from A Return of the Jedi, with CGI added to give it a weak, uh, wreck design. So, the original throne room that we do, in fact, get to see in, of course, The Rise of Skywalker and Return of the Jedi, the fact that it's now back... That actual throne that you do in fact see in the background that once belonged to Palpatine is the original throne that belonged to Sidious, alright, during the events of Return of the Jedi and when it was actually developed, when the movie was actually made back in the early 1980s. That's the actual throne except new CGI has been added into the mix in order to give it a rusted, wrecked appearance. So... That to me is yet another nice thing by JJ and George in order to bring back such an iconic prop piece of Palpatine's throne room and throwing it into the mix of the Rise of Skywalker, you know. We do know that the Death Star wreckage is going to play a massive role at the very end of the second act of Episode 9 before we enter the third act, which is where, of course, you know, the world of Exegol is going to play a big role in this movie. Now, moving on forward, I want to go over the world of Exegol. That brings us to Palpatine's new homeworld, all right? Now, this is his new homeworld in The Rise of Skywalker. And the world of Exegol, which holds Palpatine's Sith Empire, was actually an original idea by George Lucas, an original world by George Lucas, that was actually intended to be a part of Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. So, Revenge of the Sith was actually supposed to have the world of Exegol for, of course, and 
Emperor Palpatine and his home world in Episode 3. So, for Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, the world of Exegol was supposed to be one of the major planets, just as big as Coruscant and all the other planets that were a part of, you know, Revenge of the Sith, like Mustafar, etc. So, the other piece that I do want to go over here that I think a lot of fans will really like is that Palpatine's crane. You guys may realize that at the very end of the trailer, you do see that Palpatine is hooked up to some kind of life support system, which also connects to the leaks that we went over, is that Palpatine's crane was an original idea for Kylo Ren by JJ that served as a life support system that JJ had this concept originally for Kylo Ren that is now being used for Palpatine that includes a mechanical arm device. Now, if you go ahead and look at the art book of The Force Awakens, you can see one of JJ's original ideas, where Kylo Ren is indeed hooked up to that life support system, where even one of his arms are hooked up to that arm device. This is said to be some sort of Star Wars dialysis machine that's going to be used by Palpatine in the film, where he eventually is going to basically make his way out of that device of using a specific new power that we went over from some of the other leaks a couple of days ago. Now, the other piece that I do want to go over here is, of course, that water vehicle that's approaching the second Death Star wreckage that is being piloted by Rey. Now, what's really intriguing about that water vehicle is that this was originally an idea by Abrams for The Force Awakens that would allow Rey to boat her way to Luke Skywalker's island on Octu that was now used for Episode 9. So originally, that water vehicle that you do see in the Rise of Skywalker trailer was originally supposed to be used on the world of Octu in Episode 7, where she would land on a distant island with the Falcon and take a boat over there to go over to the world of Octu, to the actual island, and the location of the first Jedi Temple. Now, of course, the one that really brings us back to the 1990s, Palpatine's dialogue about Rey and Kylo Ren coming together was inspired by J.J. from the Dark Empire comics in the mid-1990s of Luke and Leia coming together when Luke joined the Dark Side. So, what I like so much about that as well is that this is, of course, J.J. Abrams going back to the comics of the 1990s, the early 2000s, you name it, and pretty much incorporating it into the mix here for the rise of Skywalker. And you can really see, you know, the fact that they really are trying to incorporate a lot of Star Wars Legends material and or using Legends as a way of creating parallels in the rise of Skywalker, right? So, all of these different callbacks to the originals or original ideas of The Force Awakens and, of course, you know, other movies like Return of the Jedi and how a lot of the abandoned ideas of past Star Wars movies are now going to be made canon and thrown into the mix for The Rise of Skywalker, I think is a big deal by Disney and Lucasfilm and a step in the right direction. Now, mind you, I will add that there are parts of this trailer, I will admit, that are quite underwhelming. I will say that, and I think that I really do agree with a lot of fans out there, that there are parts in this trailer that are very underwhelming. Uh, there are shots that I absolutely love, like, you know, the Rey and Kylo sequences on the second Death Star wreckage, um, other sequences involving, you know, the Palpatine dialogue, Luke's dialogue, you name it, the major space battle, the world over, the, the battle over Exegol, I should add. Uh, all those different sequences, I think, are very powerful and stand out. But there are times in this trailer where it kind of makes dips. And what I mean by that is, there are times in the trailer, I will say, and be honest here, where I lost some interest. It was mostly affiliated with the Resistance stuff, like them on, on the horses, uh, pretty much, you know, marching on top of the Star Destroyer. Uh, that part, I really wasn't too excited about. But overall, I will say that it's a decent trailer that has some surprises here and there. It could have had more shock value added into the mix, I will say, and I'll go over this later for sure. But anyways, I would really love to hear what you guys have to say about all of these different connections, you know, to the original concepts of the past eight Star Wars movies, as well as, you know, the Star Wars Dark Empire comic line, and other aspects of Star Wars that was actually a part of the 1990s, the early 2000s, you name it, that's going to be used as inspirational source material for The Force Awakens itself. So, anyways guys, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about this below in the comments, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.